<laughs> All right, here we go. Um, we are starting with direct and inverse variation. Okay. Um, notice what this asks you for. You with me? Yeah. Um, it asks you to write a specific equation for the situation. Okay. A specific equation means that K is a number, everything else is a variable. Okay, so when I ask for the specific equation, the only place you should have a number is for k. Okay? All right, so here's what it looks like. Y varies inversely with x. How do you write that? Y varies inversely is division with x. Okay, so the equation is y equals k over x, but that is not the specific equation. That's the general equation. I want to know what k is. So now you have options. You could just plug in your x and y values, or if you recall that inverse variation is the products, you can multiply your x and your y, right? That's essentially what you're going to do anyway. If you plug in the numbers, 6 equals k over 2, you're multiplying by 2. 2 times 6 is 12, so k is 12. That means my specific equation puts 12 right here. y equals 12 divided by x. Okay, so when I, want, when I ask for the specific equation, I'm looking for that. So what is y when x is 5? Twelve divided by five, and I don't care if you leave it like that or if you want to plug that into your calculator. It's two point four. Okay. When you hear varies, um, when you hear yes, you when you hear varies, you need to write equals k, right? Because um, that's how your equation is going to get set up. All right. So number two. It says, I'm going to do it over here because this is not our specific yet. Z varies. So you're going to write what? Equals K. Equals K. Jointly is what? Multiplication. Multiplication. So jointly with X and Y means X times Y. Um, and that's your general equation. It says if X equals 2, Y equals 10, and Z is 30. So 30 equals... K times 2 times 10. Um, what do you do from here? Yeah, you can divide by 2 and then divide by 10. Or this is 20K equals 30, right? Oh, birthday drinks. Um, so 30 over 20 or 3 over 2 is your K. So your specific equation is z equals k, so 3 halves, times xy. That's your specific equation. Then it says find z when x is 5 and y is 20. So z equals 3 halves times 5 times 20. Um, you can just plug that into your calculator, and it will tell you what. should be 150. Wait, are you good with us putting in the decimal? 1.5? Yeah. yeah, that's fine. All right, you try to set up number three. Wait, it's, is it, wait, never mind. Z varies directly with the square of X. What's the square of X? X squared. X squared and inversely with Y. Z varies directly with the square of X and inversely with Y. Um, what did your general equation look like? Yes. Okay, so that's the general equation. Then you plug in the numbers that you know. So Z is 12. So 12 equals, it's a terrible size. There we go. Um, what? 12 equals K 
times 2 squared over 4. Okay? Um, now think about that. 2 squared is 4. 4 over 4 is 1. So K is what? 12. So you're going to say Z equals 12X squared over Y. Okay, so find Z if X is 5 and Y is 75. What do you get? Remember, it's 5 squared, right? 4. four. Dominic got 4. Um, good with that? What is directly? Um, whenever you hear directly, you're multiplying. Where's that four? If it varies directly with something, it's times. And jointly is. So I solved for Z here, or for K. Right. Jointly is multiplication too. We solved for K here, right? So we said 12, we plugged in for this. 12 is our Z equals K times X squared would be 2 squared over Y, which is 4. And then 2 squared is 4. So it's 4 times K over 4. That equals 12 right now. And 4 over 4 is 1. So then K is 12. So I took that K and I plugged it into my general equation. And that's what makes it my specific equation. So you want to plug in the K value and everything else should be a variable. Okay. Okay. Um, number four here. I guess it kind of depends if you understand how gears work a little bit. I don't do gears on the quiz. So if gears are like beyond you, don't worry too much about this one. But you should know with direct variation, if one thing is going up, the other thing is going where? Up, up right? Direct variation, both your, whatever it is you're talking about will be going up or both will be going down. Inverse variation, what happens? When one goes up, the other one goes down or vice versa, right? So they're going in opposite directions. Okay, this says, if a gear with D teeth does P RPMs, how many RPMs does an attached gear with C teeth do? Um, so our other gear we're going to call X. Okay, this is going to be our unknown. Um, who understands gears? The more teeth, the... But RPMs. More. RPMs, right? They're both going up. So this is direct variation. If you don't understand gears, don't worry about it. Um, but it is direct variation. They're both going up or they're both going down, okay? Um, so for direct variation, you have options. Um, you can either think of it as y equals kx. Oops, kx is your equation, right? So the relationship in your k, remember, is you're doing y divided by x. We set up proportions. Do you remember that? This feels like a little while ago now. Um, so we're setting up proportions to solve this is essentially what's happening. So we're going to say that D teeth for PRPMs should equal, um, you have an X and a C. Which one goes on top? C, right? Teeth have to stay with teeth. So C over x um, RPMs. So in this setup, we're trying to solve for x. How would you solve for x right now? Cross multiply and then divide by d. Yeah, cross multiply. So c dx equals pc, right? And then divide by d. Divide by d. So x equals pc over D, or if you did C, P over D, that's great too. Um, so just, yeah, I think it'll be pretty clear on the quiz if it's direct or inverse. You don't have to understand gears necessarily. Um, but just keep in mind, direct, you set up proportions. Inverse variation, what did we set up? We did products, right? We multiplied the two and we multiplied the two. 
Okay, so look at this one. Suppose a supply of food will feed 24 students for five days. How long will the food last if there are six more students that join the team? So the more people, the less food per person, right? So this is inverse variation. And remember, so direct you set up proportions. Inverse you set up products to set equal. Um, so 24 students for five days, you go 24 times five. Um, if there are six more students, what number are we putting down for our students? 30. 30. 24 plus 6 would be 30 times some number of days. How do you solve that? 24 times 5 is 120 equals 30D and then divide by 30. So D is 4, so it would last four days if you had six more students. Okay, last one of these. If I can go 200 miles with eight gallons of gas, how many gallons do I need for 350 miles? So the more miles, the more or less gas? Less. The more miles, the more gas you're going to use, right? Um, so if they're both going the same way, that's direct variation. What do we set up for direct variation? Proportions. Something over something equals something over something. Um, it doesn't really matter what's on top and what's on bottom because you're just going to cross multiply and you'll get the same answer either way. So if I say 200 miles for 8 gallons, what goes on top over here? 350 miles for X number of gallons. So miles over gallons equals miles over gallons. You cross multiply it. 200x equals 350 times 8 is 2,800. And then you divide by 200. X is what? 14 what? Gallons. Make sure you label. 14 gallons and 14 miles are very different things. Good on that? Okay. Um, we're going to move pretty quickly for the rest of this here because we just did a bunch of this on the homework. All right, this one, simplify state restrictions. Um, what do you do in your numerator on number seven? Take out a two, so you're left with x minus eight. What do you do with x squared minus 64? x plus eight, x minus eight. This is a difference of squares. Remember, difference of squares says you square root both, and one is plus and one is minus. So x plus 8 and x minus 8. Okay. Um, what are your restrictions? Positive and negative 8. X cannot equal positive or negative 8, okay, because of your denominator. Then you slash. X minus 8s go away. So your answer is 2 over x plus 8 as long as x is not 8 or negative 8. Good on that? Okay. Number eight. Um, what do you do on top? Star the star method. So we're going to set up a star, negative five, positive four. These are ones. What can you multiply to get a negative five that you can add to get four? Five and negative one. So this is x plus five, x minus one. Um, what can you do on the bottom? GCF. A 5x, okay? So take out a 5x. Oh, that's much bigger. Um, you would be left with what? X plus 5. X plus 5, okay? Um, what are your restrictions right now? Negative 5. Okay, this one is negative 5. What is this one? Zero. If you plugged in a zero right there, it would make the whole denominator zero, right? So whenever there's an x by itself or an x times the number, it's just zero, okay? Um, so x cannot equal zero or negative five, and then you slash x plus five and x plus five. So you are left with x minus one over five x, and you cannot get rid of those x's, right? The x minus one is very different than just x. So that is your answer. Yes, sir. 
No, because we didn't divide, right? This is not, um, the minus one is not in your like second one when we were dividing rational expressions. It's just an expression all by itself. You only do the top one when you're dividing by another rational expression. So you'll have two different um, setups and you flip. That's the only time you look at the top. So like okay, yeah, number 11, right? Okay, um, does yours, I don't think yours looks like this. When I opened yours up on my iPad, it didn't have an X, it had a dot, right? Yours have a dot? It has an X. Why does it show up different? <sighs> so annoying. Okay, um, this is the one where you get to choose. Multiply across and then simplify or cross reduce and then multiply. What do you want to do? Okay, how about you do it your way? I'll do it both ways. Um, if you multiply across, four times six is 24, a, b to the third. Multiply across on bottom, you get 90, a to the fourth, b to the second, okay? Um, if you do it this way, 24 and 90 both have to be simplified. I'm thinking it's gonna be divide both by six, so four and 15 is as much as you can reduce that. What does A over A to the fourth become? A to the third. Where? Bottom. On the bottom, the bigger number, okay? A to the third. And what about B to the third over B squared? One B on top, okay? So this is your answer. If you want to cross reduce, you would do this. Four and 10 becomes two and five. Six and nine becomes two and three. Um, B to the third over B squared is a B. A over A to the fourth is an A to the third on bottom. And now multiply. Two times two is four times B. Three times five is 15 A cubed. Notice, same answer, different method. How did you get four over 15? Did you do 24 divided by nine? I just, in my head, thought, I know 90 is divided by 6, and so is 24, so I just divided both of them by 6, but you can do that. Like, if you put into your calculator 24 divided by 90, you'll get 0.26 repeating. Then just hit math, enter, fraction, enter one more time, and it'll give you your reduced fraction. Um, okay, number 10. You are multiplying. Sorry about the ugly X. Um, what do you do in top left? Factor out an x. So you have x times what? X minus, five. x minus 5. Okay. What do you do bottom left? Star. Star. You have a 3 and a negative 4. Your a term is 1. So what can you multiply to get 3 that you can add to get a negative 4? Negative, negative 1, negative 3. So x minus 1, x minus 3. Okay, what do you do top right? Star again. Um, negative 15 and 2. What can you multiply to get a negative 15? A, a negative 3 and a positive 5. Um, so x plus 5, x minus 3. Um, and what do you do with x squared minus 25? That's a difference of squares. Whenever you see a difference of squares, whenever you see there's no B term in there, you should think, is this perfect squares? It probably is, right? The square root of X is X. The square root of five is five. One is plus, one is minus, okay? Um, your restrictions here, do they come from only the bottom or the bottom and the top right? Just the bottom, because we were multiplying to start, right? So your restrictions would be X does not equal one, three, and positive and negative five, okay? Then you can slash x minus five with x minus five, x plus five with x plus five, x minus three with x minus three. So it's x over x minus one. Questions on that? Do you have to put plus or minus five? You can say one, three, 
5 and negative 5 if you like that better. Okay, last one. We're going to take it. Um, what do you do on top left here? Factor the 2 out first, right? If there's a GCF, get rid of it. So y squared plus 2y minus 3. And now you can do star. So what can you multiply to get negative 3 that you can add to get 2? And your a is a 1 now. Um, so 3 and negative 1. Don't forget about that 2 out in front. So 2 times x plus 3 and x minus 1. What do you do with y squared minus 1? What? Not leave it. Those are both perfect squares, right? Um, you can square root y squared and get y. You can square root 1 and get 1. So x or y, oh, I changed them to x's. Sorry, these are y's. Um, y plus 1 and y minus 1. Um, this was division. That's the funky sign. Now it's multiplication, and we're flipping it over. So this is going to be our bottom the y squared minus 9, what does that become? Y minus 3, y plus 3. Y plus 3 and y minus 3. That's a difference of squares. And then what was the bottom is going to be the top now. Um, is there a GCF there? No. no. So you're going to do 2 times 3 is 6. And then 5 on bottom, but 2's in your A spot there. So what can you multiply to get 6 that you can add to get 5? 2 and 3. Reduce your 2 over 2, so that's 1 over 1. So you're using this, and you're using that. That would be y plus 1 and 2y plus 3. Um, we're not going to do state restrictions because we've done it a million times, but your restrictions would come from all of this, right? All of those. Um, start slashing y plus 3 with y plus 3, y minus 1 with y minus 1, y plus 1 with y plus 1. So you're left with 2 times 2y plus 3 over y minus 3. You cannot reduce those 3s. You cannot reduce those y's. Okay? That's your answer. If you called it 4y plus 6 over y minus 3, that'd be the same thing. Okay.